Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. With you, Assistant Prof. Dr. Muthanna Ibrahim al Azzi. In this lecture, we are going to explain how to record the electrical activity of the cardiac muscle with electrocardiogram. <clears throat> As you know, the invasion of the cardiac muscle by the contraction wave is as associated with electrical changes. These changes or potentials may be record recorded at points remote from the heart and after electronic amplification may be displayed on a pen recorder or a cathode ray oscillos oscilloscope. The waveform obtained is termed ECG. The various waves present in the waveform are lettered starting with the letter P. As you see here in this figure, the electrical cardiac waves can be, which can be obtained or recorded by ECG shown in this one second and with, with deflections started with P as we said before. This trace paper of ACG consists of five large boxes, each large box equal to one second, each large, each five large boxes, as we see here, equal to one second, while each each one one large box consists of small box. Each each large box equal to 0.2 second, and each small one or each small box are equal to 0.04 second. So we can see that the total time of one of one cardiac cycle is equal to one second. The P wave started the ECG trace waves, then, then the QRS complex, followed by the T wave, then the U wave. As you see here, the PR interval are formed from three to five small boxes. The QRS complex duration is two small boxes. The QT interval equal or compo composed of eight to eleven small boxes. The P wave correspond to the spread of the excitation from the SA node over the arterial muscle and therefore therefore represent arterial systole SA node spread SA node spread so it represents the arterial systole the propagation of the contraction wave down the bundle of his does not produce any detectable external electrical changes it is denoted on the ECG by the isoelectric or PQ interval where there is no deflection. The QRS complex at the commencement of the ventricular excitation and the T wave at the end are all that remain of this algebraic summation. The relaxation phase TP is isoelectric. To obtain the ECG trace or records, we use two sets of two sets of uh, leads. The first one called the standard limb leads. The second one called the chest leads. The standard limb leads, by which we can obtain the lead one record, lead two, lead three, and AVR, AVL, and AVF. 
The detailed waveform depends on the site of the recording electrodes. To record the standard limb leads, electrodes are applied to the left arm, right arm, and left leg. These electrodes usually consist of a metal plate which is strapped over the flat part of the limb. Electro electrode fluid or gel is used between the electrode and the skin to ensure a good electrical connection. The right leg is not used for recording the ECG, but a further electrode is often applied to this limb to earth the subject and thus minimize interference from the mains and electrical apparatus. In order to make a recording, two input connections must be made to the amplifier, and there is usually a switch on the electrocardiograph apparatus which makes the appropriate connection internally when a part particular lead is chosen. When the switch is set at lead 1, the electrodes on the right and left arms are connected to the amplifier. The amplifier then records the potential differences between the right arm and the left arm. When the switch is set to lead 2, the potential differences between right arm and left leg is recorded. When set to lead 3, the potential differences between the left arm and the left leg is recorded as shown below here. Lead 1, lead 2, lead 3. The cardiac, what, what is the cardiac vector? The figure shown the, EC, the figure shows the ECG recorded, recorded using six limb leads. One, two, three, one, two, three. They have been arranged to correspond to the figure below, as we, she, as we see here in the left side of the slide. The right side of the slide shows the angles, the angles of each lead. The second set of the leads called or termed or named chest leads. The six limb leads so far discussed give information about the electrical axis of the heart in the frontal plan. To study the activity in a horizontal plan, chest leads are used. These usually take the form of single chest electrode which will adhere to the chest wall by suction and which is connected to one input of the amplifier. The other input of the amplifier is connected to an electrically neutral point V which is obtained by joining the three limbs lead together through resistance. It is found that the, v, the point V does not change it is found that the point V does not change its potential during the cardiac cycle, and this is potential may thus, may thus be used as a reference. As the surge electrode is moved across the chest, the ECG shows a dominant S wave in chest position 1 and 2, and a dominant R wave in chest positions 5 and 6. Here in this figure we show the point where we which put where we will put the uh, chest lead. The chest lead number 1 put at the right side of the sternum in the fifth in the fourth intercostal space. The second leads at the left margin of the sternum in the fourth intercostal space. The third, the third lead put on the midway between position two and four. Look at this line, the, mid, the midway between position two and four. 
the lead number four put at the left mid clavicular mid clavicular line in the fifth intercostal space at the left anterior axillary line and at the same level as position four the lead number five must be put lead number six put at the left maxillary line left maxillary line at the same level as position four here we can see the waves that are formed or recorded in, in ECG for from each lead or vector v1 v2 v3 v4 v5 v6 